You have to finish it up. You got to get it done. Did he make? What is up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Just so you know, this is a live stream. So if you see this after the live stream is over, just take that into consideration. Israel should be able to continue to try and eliminate all of Hamas. Or did he mean they should bring things to an end now and they should now move to try and find peace? The world does not seem to have the attention span to maintain any level of support for anyone, whether you're talking about Ukraine or whether you're talking about guys? Israel, for a prolonged period of time in a war against a, a, a terrible enemy. And so when President Trump says something like, you need to finish this up, I think that he's speaking a baseline truth there. A majority of people in Israel want to get rid of Netanyahu. What the polls show is that Israelis would love to have another election, but they've had five elections in four years. It's, it's always sort of weird when people talk about Israel needs a new election. They have more new elections than Taylor Swift has outfit changes during one of her concerts. I am dressed up as a Candace Owens Jew. What is your reaction to that clip? I mean, the phrase in Hebrew is that's what we would call a chilol Hashem, right? It's a, de it's a desecration of God's name. Do you think he should be given airtime? anymore and that sort of behavior is is disgusting in any context frankly i don't know an orthodox jew who feels differently about that not one candace owens who's now left daily wire was she fired or did she leave of her own volition as far as the free speech situation what i will say is that no company has the obligation to literally pay anyone <laughs> The UN Security Council is demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza after the US failed to veto its resolution, leaving Israel increasingly isolated on the world stage. President Biden's relationship with Prime Minister Netanyahu has collapsed over the rising Palestinian death toll. Now Donald Trump has warned it's time for Israel to finish up the war as it hemorrhages international support. So can and should Israel press on alone to discuss this and much more. I'm joined by the Daily Wire's editor emeritus up, and host of the Divided States of Biden on Daily Wire Plus. Ben Shapiro, Ben, great to see you. Hey, good to see you, Pierce. How are you? You know, hanging in. How are you? <laughs> Often wonder how many people ask you that question. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get that too much. So I was kind of surprised by the question, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come to uh, some stuff that's involved you recently. But let's start with Israel. Um, you're going to co-host a fundraiser for Donald Trump. Yesterday, Trump said this. That being said, uh, you have to finish up your war. Finish it up. You got to get it done. And uh, I'm sure you'll do that. Now we got to get to peace. You can't have this going on. Uh, and I will say Israel has to be very careful because you're losing a lot of the world. You're losing a lot of support. But you have to finish up. You have to get the job done. And you have to get on to peace. What did you make of what he said there? There's been a bit of disagreement about what he intended to mean. Did he mean Israel should be able to continue to try and eliminate all of Hamas, whatever it takes to finish that job? Or did he mean they should, they should bring things to an end now? They've done enough and they should now move to try and find peace. So I actually what did co-host co a fundraiser with President Trump last week and we did briefly speak about this. So what do you guys think about this? What do you guys think? Do you guys think that? What do you guys think Trump means by this? I can tell you what I think he means, but I want to know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll let you know what I think. This topic. My impression is that President Trump is saying what is certainly true here, which is that the the clock has been ticking on Israel literally since October seventh in terms of finishing up its operation. The world does not seem to have the attention span to maintain any level of support for anyone, whether you're talking about Ukraine or whether you're talking about Israel, for a prolonged period of time in a war against a, a, a terrible enemy. And so when President Trump says something like, you need to finish this up, I think that he's speaking a baseline truth there, which is that Israel does need to hurry and, and finish this up. And frankly, they should have been moving faster in the first place. I think it's more of a PR point than it is an idea that Israel should, should stop, for example, by, by not going into Rafa. I don't, I don't think that's what President Trump is saying there. Do you feel comfortable? I think the problem is people think he's talking about Palestine and he's just talking about Hamas. Strictly Hamas. That's my opinion with what Trump's saying. Comfortable, but we've talked about this war a lot. Do you feel comfortable about a full assault on Rafa if one and a half million people remain in that vicinity, including majority women and children? Because it would obviously be, in that instance, devastating in terms of civilian casualties and would pour even more pressure on Israel and lose them even more support. I mean, do you, do you think this is the right strategy? 
Well, I think that Israel is is pretty united in its belief that it is, and Israel, I think, is best positioned to adjudicate its own interests when it comes to things like like you're talking about, whether it's international support or the future of, of the Gaza Strip. My understanding is, from, from all of the public discussions that have been happening, that there's significant discussion about how to try to move civilians out of the way. One of the big problems has been that Egypt won't open the gate, even temporarily, to allow enough civilians outside of Rafah so that Israel can perform operations inside of Rafah. Apparently, there are four Hamas battalions that are currently located inside of Rafah. I'm sure that if the United States or the international community could offer Israel some sort of Harry Potter spell to disappear all of the Hamas terrorists inside Rafah, I'm sure Israel would take it. The last thing Israel wants to do is maximize civilian casualties. What's been perfectly obvious is that Hamas has precisely the opposite view. They would love to maximize civilian casualties because the, the increasing civilian death toll, as you've pointed out, has been the single factor that's been leading to increased pressure on Israel to leave Hamas alone. What yeah, does ben Shap is Ben Shapiro like the conservatives' version of Destiny? This dude talks like a million miles a minute, just like Destiny. Does. You make of Biden uh, really turning on Netanyahu. I mean, this this decision not to veto this resolution is the latest escalation, really, in the American administration under Biden uh, reining back its support of Israel. How significant is that? And what do you think about Biden doing this? I mean, obviously, I think that he's morally wrong to to abstain from a resolution that seems to disconnect the hostage situation from the ceasefire. All of the versions the United States have been pushing prior suggested that in order for a ceasefire to be called for or attained, there had to be a release of the hostages. This particular version of the UN resolution sort of separates off the two issues, doesn't mention Hamas, doesn't mention October 7th. That's that's the point of contention with regard to the UN Security Council resolution the United States abstained from. As far as the sort of increased pressure that, that Biden or Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader here, have been putting on the Netanyahu administration, frankly, I think it's it's political dishonesty. I think that there, there are a lot of members of the Democratic Party who are very critical of Israel's government full scale. They're trying to put it on Netanyahu because they realize that a lot of the sort of liberal Jewish base in the United States that votes Democrat supports Israel, but also doesn't like Netanyahu very much. But they're ignoring the central reality in Israel, which is that there is full scale public support for going into Rafah from right, left, and center. The current government of the state of Israel is a war cabinet, including the chief rival to Benjamin Netanyahu, Benny Gantz, who just, vote, who just visited the United States and, in fact, was treated to much of the same language by the Biden administration. So, so to suggest that it's sort of Netanyahu's own political domestic manipulations leading to his desire to go into Rafah, Netanyahu is, in fact, correct when he suggests that there is broad public support for going into Rafa. And in fact, if the current war cabinet does not go into Rafa, there's a very solid chance that the government of Israel falls in their new elections. I mean, so you guys, so, all right, so just so we know, right? Right now, Ukraine and Russia are at war, correct? We're funding it. Right now, Israel and Palestine are at war. We're funding it, right? From what I understand, China is getting ready to invade Taiwan. With Biden being connected to the CCP, we know this. Whatever, we we you know you guys know what I mean with the, with his ties to to the Chinese Communist Party. Um, do you guys think? that we will be funding that war as well at all? Th that is true about the support, definitely. But it's also true that a majority of people in Israel want to get rid of Netanyahu. So this is a support for... But not during the, not during, not during the actual conflict, right? What the polls right. show is that Israelis would love to have another election, but not right at the moment, meaning that they've had five elections in four years. It's, it's always sort of weird when people talk about Israel needs a new election. They have more new elections than Taylor Swift has outfit changes during one of her concerts. It's not as though there's a lack of elections. I do find it sort of strange that there's always a call for new elections in Israel, which again has many, many elections. I have yet to hear for a call for elections in say the West Bank or Gaza Strip where there has not been an election since 2005. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is because everybody understands if there were an election in the Gaza Strip or West Bank, Hamas would actually win. What I don't understand about Israel's strategy is how they perceive actual victory. Yes, you can take out the 30 to 35,000 Hamas terrorists. Right. Yeah, maybe they can do that. And maybe in the process of that, they kill tens of thousands more civilians and have to yeah. deal with, like the, uh, with the uh, contention that that will cause worldwide. And maybe Israelis don't care about that part as long as they get rid of Hamas. So let's get to an end game where Hamas is gone. How do you guys feel about that? See, I don't like that. That's the one thing I don't like. Um, I'm not for or against it. I have no dog in the fight. 
But uh, I do not want to see innocent civilians getting killed, regardless of anything. Why does leveling Gaza and killing so many civilians, why would that give anyone in Israel any kind of comfort that that would, that would kill off the ideology that fueled Hamas, that it wouldn't actually just lead to an increase in that ideology, more hatred towards Israelis, more hatred towards Jewish people. I've never quite understood what the end game looks like here for Israel that makes Israel more secure. Well, I mean, the end game presumably is security, not a sort of dynamic ideological scoring among a population that right now overwhelmingly supports the October 7th attacks and prior to October 7th, overwhelmingly supported terror attacks against the state of Israel and overwhelmingly supported the destruction of the state of Israel. The sort of idea that more conciliation from Israel was bringing about peaceful conditions with the Palestinian Authority or with Hamas has been obviously proved false by the fact that Israel literally withdrew all IDF forces from the Gaza Strip in 2005. Hamas took control. They spent the last 20 years turning it into a giant terror base. From the Israeli perspective, my assumption is that what they are figuring is degrade Hamas's military capacity such that they cannot be an offensive threat to the state of Israel, and then try to enact some sort of military control of the area sufficient to prevent any future threat from arising from that area. I'm sure that Israel would love to hand the area over to Egypt. Egypt says no. Egypt doesn't want any part of it. Israel would love to hand it over to Jordan. Jordan says no. Jordan doesn't want any part of it. Israel's tried to hand it over to the Saudis, to the UAE, to the United States, to literally anyone. No one wants to run that area specifically because the population is already quite radicalized and was radicalized before October 7th. And so what you're probably going to end up with, and I said this, I think, the first time I appeared on the show, which was shortly after October 7th in, in this context, what you're probably going to end up with is some form of joint military rule in the Gaza Strip in which Israel has the intelligence capacity to go in and conduct raids in, in terror hotbeds the same way that they do right now, for example, in the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, places like Janine, places like Nablus. The IDF is constantly attempting to go in and root out terror cells in these particular areas. One of the big flaws that led to October 7th was the fact that Israel had no forces on the ground and no actual intelligence capability inside the Gaza Strip. One of the consequences of this war has been a lot of very high passions on both sides, a lot of angry disagreements. You and company have been at the centre of a very uh, high profile one at the moment with Candace Owens, who's now left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Pierce. <laughs> at, at, all. at all. Yeah, she got fired. You can't give me any... Uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. Can, can, I ask, can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no, I'm not... Can I ask why you don't want to say anything? Um, again, you can ask. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean I only, I'm only curious because I know what a, a staunch defender of free speech you are, and it would surprise me if it had been someone's opinions that would make you want to part company with them, however contentious. I mean, su suffice it to say, the only thing I will say is what I've said all along with regard to Candace or with regard to any of our other hosts. I am not in hiring and firing position with The Daily Wire. I'm a co-founder of The Daily Wire. I'm a co-owner of The Daily Wire. I'm not actually in management. Jeremy Boring and Caleb Robinson are in management positions with regard to Candace or anyone else. And as far as the free speech sorry. situation, what I not will say sorry. is that He's no company has the obligation to literally pay anyone. The, the Daily Wire is a, is a publisher. It is not a platform. Uh, I've never called for Candace or anyone else, for that matter, to be banned from YouTube, to be banned from X, to be banned from any platform. That's a different story, obviously, when it comes to any publisher. Any publisher gets to make decisions about what it wishes to, uh, what it wishes to purvey and not. I mean, it's, I'm just not going to labour this, but one more point I would make is it's what been up, reported girl? extensively that the reason for her departure was because uh, her comments have been perceived by people at the Daily Wire as anti-Semitic. Again, I'm I'm not going to comment on this, Pierce. Okay. I don't know why it's Rabbi Shmuley. Would you comment on him? Because Jeremy has actually commented on Rabbi Shmuley. So I've avoided commenting publicly on Rabbi Shmuley because, as far as I can tell, the man is an attention whore of the highest order. Is that the general position Ooh. of the company on Mr. Shmuley? I mean, that, that, that's my personal position for sure. I mean, I, I think that, you know, Rabbi Shmuley happens to be a person with whom I agree on some matters related to, say, Middle East policy. And uh, I, I also believe that his devotion to camera and notoriety have made him do some untethered things in, in recent days.
Bro, this is the he is literally the conservative destiny. I swear to God. And there's a clip. I'm just going to play it, and you can comment or otherwise. But it was extraordinary to me. We've had him on this show a few times, but I found this really quite extraordinary. Let's take a look. Worm is a day of celebration. We feel bad for Candace Owens that she lost her job. So I figure, with her image of what Jews are supposed to look like, why not Valerie's <laughs> validator? I am dressed up as a Candace Owens Jew. Now, this is not a Christian child, this is a Jewish child. But if it would be, I got my Christian blood. Mmm, spicy, delicious. I got my... Bro, he looks like, uh... Freddy Krueger right there. Jewish nose. I have filth, because Jews are all filth. And more than anything else, what does AD have? It's money! I mean, what is your reaction to that to that clip? I mean, the phrase though. in Hebrew is that's what we would call a chilo Hashem, right? It's a, de it's a desecration of God's name. And that sort of behavior is, is disgusting in any context. Uh, and uh, frankly, I don't know an Orthodox Jew who feels differently about that. Not one. Do you think he should be given airtime anymore, Rabbi Shmuley? I mean, I'm not going to make decisions about who should air him and, and who should not. Uh, what I will say is that the that, that sort of behavior is untethered from reality and, and makes a mockery of much of the uh, the mission for, for people like me, which includes fighting anti-Semitism. Yeah, but I get a lot of people oh actually gosh, after his bro. most recent appearance here just saying this guy does Shut not up. speak for most Jewish people like me. You know the one thing I don't like about Ben Shapiro? He had all this stuff to say about Candace Owens and spoke up, out about her, but he will not, for the life of him, will not debate Nick Fuentes at all. It is sad. And they, they write in their droves and they say, please stop having someone on. Well, I mean, that, I mean what he's like doing a, there certainly doesn't speak for literally any Jew that, I can, that I've heard of right. or know. I mean, I can't speak to his positions on Israel again. You know, my positions on Israel speak for my positions on Israel, but that's a different story from dressing up in a Sturmer costume. Uh, to to mock anti-Semitism, I think that that's quite you know counterproductive and and especially given the the online discourse, pretty pretty negative in in pretty much every way I can think of. Yeah, Russia and what happened there was a terror attack by ISIS K. Um, people have made some parallels. They said, look, there's a massive terror attack on the heart of Russia in Moscow. Uh, 130 people brutally murdered. Putin. Uh, and the Kremlin know where these terrorists came from and of a specific area, would it be logical, given the way that Israel responded to uh, the Hamas attack on October the 7th, for Putin to go and do... <laughs> he calls him Putin. <laughs> for Putin. Yo, everybody, please make sure to hit that like for me if you could. The same thing that Israel's done in Gaza to the area where these terrorists came from. I mean, so first of all, Putin has done that historically many times over, whether you're talking about Chechnya or whether you're talking about other areas. Uh, as far, And nobody seemed to bat an eyelash when it was Vladimir Putin doing that. So I, I'll first point that out. Second of all, I don't see the international pressure to give ISIS-K or its allies a state in the aftermath of a mass terror attack. I don't see a lot of calls for Putin to act with tremendous restraint in the aftermath of that terror attack. And frankly, I think it's very unlikely that Putin is going to do anything like rooting out ISIS-K in, in the air in Tajikistan or wherever else the, these people are coming from, he seems more focused on trying to misdirect this terror attack into an attack on Ukraine, which is, I think, pretty disgusting. Yeah, I mean, it is disgusting. It's completely untrue, obviously. Uh, How do we know what's true and what's not true? Uh, but it's something that in the world of disinformation that we, that we exist in now is gaining currency. I see it online that a lot of people who have a bent towards Russia and Putin, they're quite happy to believe that Ukraine was behind this. I mean, the, the amount of, of misinformation on on various social media outlets is extraordinary right now. The velocity is extraordinary right now. And pretty much any conspiracy theory is capable of gaining just unbelievable legs very, very quickly. What do we do about it, Ben? I mean, the only thing you can do is, is try to speak fact into what appears to be a vacuum. The, the thing I've been encouraging people to do more and more often is go outside and touch some grass, man. You guys all I mean, seriously, the online world is a terrible place. And then you turn it off. And you go outside and you talk to normal people for five minutes, and they are much happier and actually exist in a world of reality. It's this own self-contained nether world where some of the some of the most conspiratorial people hang out and create echo chambers for one another. And whoever yes, sir, can say the loudest I conspiracy you, theory bro. gets the most engagement. The, the best way to do this, I recommend to everybody. God was right. Take the seventh day off. Turn off your electronics. Get out of the house. Go to church. Like, do something worthwhile with your life for five minutes. You know, I got into a bit of a spat with Elon Musk because I had an interview lined up. I like that. Not the whole going to church part, but I do like that.
David, how are you doing today, bro? I appreciate you stopping by. Up with him, and he cancelled at the last minute because I criticised him a month earlier, and he found the clip on this show, actually. I criticised him for allowing Alex Jones back on the platform, having originally said he wouldn't let him back on because he wouldn't let people stand on the, the day at the graves of dead children and make money from it in the way that he'd been doing. Was he right to let Alex Jones back on? If you look at Alex Jones's feed... Hey, did you guys see that Obama just made a movie about, like, what just happened with the bridge a couple months, like, last year, I think? I'm going to look it up in a second. On X in the last few weeks, he's I spewing endless about it. conspiracy theories to quite a big audience. Does that not, not unnecessarily, not, unfairly, like wrongly fuel the What's kind up, of Michael? toxic nature of, of discourse you doing, that you were talking about? Yeah, so again, I'll go back to the distinction that I was making earlier between platform and publisher. I wouldn't hire Alex Jones or pay him to purvey his views here at Daily Wire, even if I had the power to do so. But a platform is a different thing. I think what Elon is trying to do with X, for good or ill, and I think it's come with, with some of both, is to broaden the scope of free speech, try to turn it into a into a town square. That's going to come along with an awful lot of people who are, who are using that town square to throw well, feces against you. the wall. What did you make of the Don Lemon Musk interview and the fallout? Um, I mean, I, frankly, I thought that, that Don didn't do a particularly good job with that with that interview. Well. I'll be honest with you. Well. Um, but with all of that said, as far as far as the fallout of it, again, between Elon and Don making their business decisions, that that is up to them. It, I, my, one thing I noticed: Don Lemon can still post his show on X. Mm. He just doesn't have to be paid by Elon for it. What I was surprised right. by was that Don yeah. Lemon did that interview exactly how I expected Don Lemon to do that interview. I mean, I think that's what people don't understand, bro. Like. He doesn't have to pay Don Lemon if he doesn't want to. People are like, oh, he's trying to not give him freedom of speech. Like, what are you talking about? He literally said, hey, you can post whatever you want on, on here. I'm just not paying you to do it. I was surprised that Elon Musk was surprised that Don Lemon was Don Lemon. You know, the, the media is pretty <laughs> adversarial place. That's and I, I think that. Yeah, you know, again, I'm not going to speak to Elon's level of surprise. I will say that Don Lemon being Don Lemon is very Don Lemon of him. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 not, I nothing surprising there. Is. is that a movie that, like, Obama, like, had part of for some reason, David? <laughs> we woke up this morning to this dreadful story in Baltimore with this bridge collapsing. Uh, a cool, lot of really you, bizarre, unanswered questions. You know, how did the power on this on this cargo ship suddenly go off, which then made it veer off course? Why was there no tugboat? Some people have been pointing out, and, and so yeah. on. I was I also struck that. by I the just fact heard about that, that earlier. a cargo ship hitting a part of a major arterial bridge in a major. Bro, look at that! I'm a, I seen a I seen like a video earlier of it happening, dude. Like. It was weird. The the light on the boat, the light like the power kept going off, and then coming back came back on. Then it went off again, and then I don't know if it came back on or if it stayed off. But uh, that was really weird. Bro. American city could bring the whole bridge down. What, what did you make of this? Look at that. You oh know, obviously, God. it's a tragedy. There will be a full investigation. I I'm certain of that. Yeah, I, I, I hesitate to always jump to sort of – there are a bunch of conspiracies we were talking about that are floating around yeah. online. It appears not to be a terror attack. In fact, it appears that many of the people who are on board actually called the land-based authorities, which is why the bridge wasn't more filled with, with cars and people when the bridge collapsed. But you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till all the facts come in before making any sort of statement on, on what I think happened or what can be Bro, done to correct David, it. Otherwise, I, I feel like we're jumping the gun probably. What, are you concerned about infrastructure generally in America? I've seen that as, again being debated uh, today, that the, there's a kind of sense that there's a rotting infrastructure at the heart of America. Uh, it's all this DEI bullshit, bro. Like, I'm serious, dude. If I ever get a company, I'm literally hiring somebody for, for their value to the company, and I don't give a shit what color your skin is. I don't even care if every single employee I hire is white. If that's what it is and that's who's better for my company, so be it. I don't give a shit. Uh, first of all, I think that that tends to be a little bit overstated because you can obviously find anecdotal situations where there's a, a bridge that, that falls down and that's terrible. Uh, this one didn't fall down of its own accord, obviously, at a 165,000-ton ship that ran into it. Um, but beside that, uh, you know, I, I think that the, the biggest problem with infrastructure tends to be state and local-based infrastructure, not 
federal-based infrastructure. In other words, spending a bunch of federal money on infrastructure tends not to cure most of these problems. This one was under federal auspices, by the way, so we'll see if there were inherent flaws in, in the bridge. And if so, obviously, somebody is to blame, and presumably the Secretary of Transportation will get the blame if that's the case. You've made a very interesting documentary. I watched it last night about fentanyl, America's silent epidemic. I was struck by the fact that more people in America get killed by fentanyl now than are killed by guns. Let's take a quick look at... Uh... Is that true? Dude. No shot. A clip from the film. My only child is dead. But you don't even, like, that's crazy. She died from fentanyl poisoning. My son died at 25. It was fentanyl that killed my child. Fentanyl overdose is the leading cause of death for Americans, 18 to 45. The sitting president is supposed to put Americans first. We went to Kensington, a neighborhood of Philadelphia, to check out the fentanyl epidemic. This is ground zero for the fentanyl epidemic, the homeless epidemic. In the heart of America's towns and cities, a silent crisis leaves a trail of devastation in its wake. Joe Biden and his administration have not done anything to protect Americans. Yeah, Join me on the ground as I bring you the real-world consequences of one of the most destructive presidencies in American history. One degree of separation between the Biden family and the kings of fentanyl. I thought wow. it was a very powerful documentary. Uh, some shocking statistics wow. in there. Um, what is the answer to this fentanyl crime? Obviously, the poorer southern border is a massive part of the problem. But should there be more regulation, more laws, more control over fentanyl itself? So certainly there ought to be state level laws that are passed that allow for drug dealers to be prosecuted for homicide if a drug dealer passes a drug with fentanyl laced into it to one of their victims, because it is, in fact, fentanyl poisoning. Many of the people who are taking. Well, they're not even putting murderers in jail anymore, depending on what state you're in. Dude, I seen a thing in New York City. Um, I want to say two different situations. One situation was. These people hack. Up. Did you ever dig into 9 11? Same shit happening. <clears throat> I never. I know. I have friends who dug into it. I, um, I've heard multiple different kinds of stories about 9 11. I'm not going to say any of that on here because they'll probably try and deep platform me completely. But I, I've heard a lot of different things, and some of the things that my friends have told me have made sense. Um, and then some things you never know. But um, this is just crazy to me, dude. This whole fentanyl stuff. Ah, man. Fentanyl That's, using the... More people have died from fentanyl than guns? Dude, what? The term fentanyl overdose is probably wrong for a huge number of people. An overdose is when you take too much of a drug that you were actually intending to ingest. In many of these cases, you have somebody who's taking what they think is an Adderall, and it turns out that it's laced with fentanyl, and a grain of fentanyl or two can kill you. And so that actually is a poisoning, and drug dealers ought to be prosecuted in yes. precisely that now, fashion. I agree with that. Like, So if you're selling fake pills and somebody dies from them, you should be charged with murder. I don't know. I, I guess maybe like what? I mean, you can't even say involuntary manslaughter because if you know if you know what you're selling, then that's just murder to me. I'm sorry. But you're right. The biggest issue, obviously, is the poorest southern border. Uh, the, the first episode in this series was about the southern border. The drug cartels control the entirety of the American southern border. And right now they are using illegal immigration as actually a misdirect to get fentanyl into the country. What they're doing is flooding illegal immigrants into certain areas. The Border Patrol under Joe Biden makes it first priority to go to those areas and process the illegal immigrants who are arriving in these areas. That leaves the rest of the border completely unmanned. And while the rest of the border is unmanned, that's when you see people coming in with backpacks filled with fentanyl. That fentanyl, the precursors are coming from China. It's being processed in Mexico at largely bases that are owned by Chinese nationals. And, and then it's being given to, is being traded to the Mexican drug cartels, which are pushing it up north through the border. I 1,000% believe that. One thousand percent really is a, a deadly it is not really an epidemic as much as it is a deadly terror attack on the united states via the the mexican drug cartels what should biden be doing that he's not doing i mean number one he has to actually reinstate the remain in mexico policy with regards to illegal immigration which will allow the reconstitution of the border patrol so they can actually guard the unguarded areas he needs to shut the border he needs to be putting significant pressure in terms of sanctions and other other mechanisms 
on China for shipping the precursors into Mexico in the first place. China has effectively been lying to the United States, saying that they are doing things about the fentanyl overdose exposure problem, but they really are not. What they really have done is instead of just shipping pure fentanyl into Mexico, they're shipping the precursors. Bro, no shot. This dude, man, Ben Shapiro is like wired up. ...into Mexico. The United States should be putting economic pressure on the government of Mexico, which effectively has turned this, this entire state to America South into a narco state. The drug cartels don't just run the American southern border. Effectively, they run the, they run the Mexican government at this point. And if, if serious pressure isn't brought to bear on the Mexican government to disconnect and fight the drug cartels, this problem is going to continue to fester. Let me ask you a question that I think will uh, appeal to fans of our lengthy relationship who remember some of our early skirmishes. But because a drug is killing nearly 100,000 people a year in America, you're very determined to bring in all sorts of new regulations, rules, laws, and so on. Why do you not feel as strongly about the number of people being killed by guns? Well, I mean, I certainly feel horrible for people who are killed by guns. There, there's two main distinctions. One is that we actually have a right in the United States to keep and bear arms, whereas you do not have a right to actually ingest or distribute fentanyl. And two <laughs> is that the solution... I mean, that's just common sense, Piers. What, what kind of questions that? proposed for preventing the distribution of fentanyl in the United States are likely to be significantly more impactful than many of the gun regulations that have been proposed in order to stop the so-called gun violence epidemic. There, there are significant other problems that are involved with the gun violence problem in the United States, ranging from, if you're talking school shootings, mental illness, to crime problems that are responsible for the predominant amount of gun crime in America's major cities, for example. In other words, the instrument, yeah. to me, when it comes to guns, is secondary. I like some of the stuff that Ben Shapiro says. It's just hard for me to listen to him talk. Very consideration, especially considering legislation already on the books in many of these places. When it comes to fentanyl, there are simple things that can be done, like right this moment, to actually stop this. Plus, again, you do not actually have the right to ingest or distribute fentanyl. Would you not accept, though, That's true. that if the answer to fentanyl deaths is to have less fentanyl available on the streets, would one of the answers to the gun violence epidemic in America not be to have fewer guns? Listen to Piers' wording, right? It's not a gun epidemic. What does that mean? It doesn't even, it's not a thing. Like, you don't ingest guns into your veins and it's an epidemic like a fucking drug epidemic. This dude's an idiot sometimes. Uh, no, I, I don't necessarily accept that. I think it depends who has the guns. I think that if the if the answer is fewer guns in the hands of people who shouldn't have them, then you and I totally agree on this, and we have for at least What's a decade up, at this point, I believe. Years. Know, um, but when it comes years, to years, actually, Ben, fifteen years. Yeah, it's been it's been a long time. We're much older than when we began this entire <laughs> I don't, rigmarole. I don't, but, uh, I don't know where Piers was going with that, Michael. That doesn't make sense to me. It's not. It's like it's apples and oranges. You know what I mean? It's. There's no such thing as, like, a gun epidemic. That's not a real thing. Everybody should be able to carry a gun. You're aging better than me, just for, for what it's worth. <laughs> well, I started off younger, to be fair to you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you finally about the, the upcoming American election. Um, Donald Trump, it seems the more crap thrown at him by the left, the more powerful he gets and the more Oof. electable he becomes, with even independents and Republicans that it, don't it like make him sense. gravitating to a mindset about Trump that he's a victim of a massive witch hunt here. Uh, do you think it can propel him to the White House? Or did you see signs in the Republican primary season that there are too many disaffected Republicans, actually, to, to help him win a general election? Uh, no, actually, I think what the primary showed is that there are a lot of Democrats who are crossing over and voting in Republican primaries. I think that by polling data, 95% yeah. of Republicans well, are going to go vote for Donald Trump. The big problem is for Joe Biden, about 80% <clears throat> of Democrats say they approve of Joe Biden. He's the sitting president. So Joe Biden has a really bad systemic problem on his hands. It's hard to see, frankly, how he can change direction absent some sort of external considerations that change everybody's math. The economy starts to boom in such a way that people actually feel it or all the foreign policy issues which are on fire right now, the world's on fire, all those suddenly go out and Americans change their perception of Biden. I've said before that every presidential election is a referendum on one of the two candidates and whoever it's a referendum on loses. Right now, the election is a referendum on Joe Biden. And if it's a referendum on Joe Biden come November, Donald Trump... Yeah, without a doubt, bro. Like, I'm not a big fan of his take on uh, of, uh, Ben Shapiro with Israel, and I understand he's Jewish, but it's just not right. President again. And if Trump does win, and I think your calculus is correct, if he does win, is that going to be a good or bad thing for America? I mean, you've, you've blown hot and cold on Trump over the years, as I thing. have, as many people have, but would it be a good or bad thing, Trump Mark II in the White House? 
Uh, I think that compared to a second Joe Biden administration, I think that it would be an excellent thing. I think that, that Donald Trump's policy. I'm going to show y'all uh, here in a minute Ben Shapiro's take on Donald Trump. Uh, policy is the best part of his administration the first time around. And so I would hope for more of the first three years of his policy in a second Trump administration. What, if you were advising him, what would you hope for less for second time around from Trump? I mean, it's always the same thing. You know, I, I would hope for uh, less of the rhetorical flourishes. I would hope for more of the unifying rhetoric, a little bit less of the freneticism. Now, I think that what Americans really want right now is to be left alone and for there to be a feeling of stability. And it's been a very long time since we've had any of that in the United States. Most Americans, again, just want to touch grass and go back to normal. And so back to normal, if Trump could do that, it would make him immensely popular mm -hmm. because the perception is that he can't, right? That he can't stop himself from being eccentric. But if he could actually get in the White House and then actually pursue Joe Biden's strategy, which is going to bed early at 5 o'clock p.m. every night, except with some good policies, uh, then I think Americans would be pretty happy. I think you're right. Ben Shapiro, great to have you back on Sesame. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Okay, let's do this. Watch this. Um, I believe it's... I think this might be, yeah. Okay, here we go. Ben Shapiro. Um, you know, we'll watch the whole thing. So mind you, this is seven years ago. So I this was right before Trump got, uh, Trump got elected. Amazing. <laughs> Welcome to the Father State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. There are conservatives out there who still refuse to support Donald Trump. I have with me a friend that I have to discuss this with. <laughs> <laughs> ben Shapiro, editor in chief of the Daily Wire and host of the Ben Shapiro Show. Ben, thanks so much for coming, man. Hey, good to see you, man. During the primaries, Republican mm -hmm. primaries, were there someone you supported? Yeah, as a, crew, as a Cruz backer in the primaries. You, and why Cruz? Uh, because he reflected my idea. Who would be, I, I was not a fan of Ted Cruz. Theological all. predilections best. And why not Crazy. Trump? Because I don't think he's conservative. I think he toxifies the conservative effort, and I think that he's doing an enormous amount of damage down ballot and, and for the future. Are you concerned that uh, Donald Trump could lose? and Hillary could win, and the country would just go to hell in a handbasket? Yeah, I mean, of course. I, I think that for conservatives, this election was already lost because one of two things happens. Either he wins, in which case I have real fears that he's going to gut the conservative movement because I've already seen it. I've seen people lying. See, Ben Shapiro's not as smart as you guys think for Trump, pretending that Trump is conservative, Fair shifting right. their conservatism to meet Trump. And you see it in the polls. You see 61% of, of Republicans now say they're anti-free trade. And that scares me because I think the only future for the country is a limited government conservative, and Trump certainly is not that. If he loses, then we have a, a, sim, we have, we have a similar problem, which is that he's, he's gutting the party. I mean, if you, if you just look at, at how he's doing with minorities, if you look at how he's doing with women, uh, there's an entire generation of people who are going to look at everyone who backed Trump and started speaking out in favor of Trump and talking about how wonderful Trump was, and they're going to say, so you're okay with the Mexican judge comments, and you're okay with him making fun of disabled reporters, and you're okay with this and that. That means you're a bad person. I'm never going to vote for people like this again. And also... I mean, he's doing it himself, David. I didn't do anything, bro. He's doing it to himself. If he loses, it's going to be important there are a group of people who say, look, we found him unacceptable from the beginning. And so if you try and hit him with us, well, don't hit him with us. We didn't, we didn't back him. Well, you say he's not a conservative. Yes. Define conservative for me. Okay. God-given rights, limited government, personal responsibility. You don't think he, he is for those things? Uh, I don't think that he believes fundamentally in any of those things. Really? How doesn't he? He's literally been talking about draining the swamp since the beginning. Dude, Ben Shapiro made himself look like... Really? Why is yeah. that? Okay, so I think that Donald Trump's philosophy is ad hoc. I don't think he really thinks deeply about these issues. He just sort of has policies that he backs. But to take God-given rights for as an example, 
he clearly doesn't care very much about religious freedom issues. I mean, when you, when you look at the transgender bathroom issue in North Carolina, he says, yeah, I'd open up Trump Tower to transgender bathrooms, and, you know, I think that the local governments should basically do what they want to do. You know, well, he, he did say the local government should handle that, and voters are mm -hmm. going to have to keep his feet to the fire to make sure that he... <laughs> Uh, promotes the issues that they're concerned about. Right. Because one thing that has happened in this country is that the voters have not uh, stopped the government from expanding yeah, that's and right. doing exactly what it wants. Agreed. So even if we should get Donald Trump, we still have to keep an eye on him. 100 percent. But the original right. question is why isn't right. he conservative? I, like, I understand, by the way, I totally understand the argument and sympathize with the argument and sort of agree with the argument if Trump is better Dude, Ben, I mean, like, he just killed himself with this interview, and the, all you, anybody can look this up. But then Hillary, you have to vote for Trump. Right. Right, I get that. And then I have a lot of respect for people who feel that way. What I don't have respect for is the position Donald Trump is a stalwart conservative who's standing up for all of our principles. Well, a lot of those issues, he admitted that he was not for in the beginning. Over the years, he had changed of mind or change of heart. Very convenient About those heart. things. Yeah, I mean, uh, he, he was... Is, is there anything wrong with that? Uh, is there uh, anything with wrong with changing your mind about something? If I believe that he actually changed his mind out of anything but political convenience in the moment that he's in, then no. I mean, if I thought that it was genuine. The Republican um, establishment, the politicians who have been there for years and years and years, mm -hmm. have not done anything about those conservative issues. They have so, not stopped one thing. And I mean, like, well, can we just get Jesse as our president, please? Dude, I'll take four years. I'll take eight years of Jesse. I feel like he still got it in him. And there is not one person that was running uh, during the primaries that I felt, other than Donald Trump, I'd like to give him a chance. Well, I mean, Cruz actually but, shut down the government, so you, you at least he, have to say that he Cruz didn't accomplish tried. anything. Though. Okay, but what has Trump ever accomplished in politics? He gave money to. Let's fast forward four years after this, and then ask that. Nancy Pelosi and to, and to Harry Reid and to Hillary Clinton. But he's never been a politician before. Well, right, but I, I didn't give money, did you? I mean, I didn't give money. Between 1980 and 2010, Donald Trump gave more money to Democrats than Republicans. Well, that would do to being in business. He's uh, successful, yeah. and business people do that. You know, I was a Democrat once, mm -hmm. and I supported abortion and all that right. stuff that Democrats do, mm -hmm. but then I had a change of heart, I had a change of mind. Again, if And people, so if I ran for president, would people hold that against? Me? No, because I think that you can tell when somebody's change of heart is, is genuine. I mean, Trump's change, his conversion story, his road to Damascus story on abortion is not particularly inspiring. Now, if you want to say, okay, he's better than Hillary, he's a chance we have to take, we'll hold his feet to the fire, that's a position I can respect. The he's a conservative position is not a position I can respect. As far as the, as far as... I mean, in my eyes, Trump's more... Bro, in, in my yeah, dude, he's, he is a tool. I liked what he said on Pierce, but uh, in my eyes... Uh, Trump is a thousand percent more conservative than Ben Shapiro could even hope to be. As the, you know, the, the Republicans in Congress haven't done anything. I agree mostly. Fool? I think that they have done a couple of things, right? I mean, I think that they... They, they let Obama destroy the country I, in I, seven years. I don't, I don't disagree. Has, I, I, without I, any... Pu I mean, just nothing. I, I, okay, so I don't think it's fair to say they have no pushback. I mean, Obama I mean, does they have gave veto us power. pretense pushback, but I, I agree. Obama got everything done that he wanted to do so, and still doing some stuff. So not, not everything, but I think a yeah, lot of things right. that he wanted, for sure. Right. But I don't think the answer to that is to nominate a Democrat. But I mean, I guess we're past that now. I mean, Let me ask this. Uh, one thing about Cruz I wanted to know from you. Do you trust Cruz now? Do, do I, in, in what sense? I mean, he's not my financial planner. Do I trust him to be conservative uh, uh, in office? Yes. Right. Do you, yes. Do you, yes. you believe him when he says those things? Yes. He's a, he's, he's a very, he's a, Ted is a very clever politician, and he is a politician, but he does have... Come on, bro. Ted is not that clever. Get out of here. He's this dude, li listen, and this is funny because this is all before Trump was president, right? Ted Cruz literally left his people in the state freezing and just went to Cancun. I understand sending your kids and your wife off to Cancun, while you, but you stay there, bro, and you stay in the trenches with your people. He's, what I've said about Ted is that he is the most sincere guy who looks insincere who has ever lived. When he uh, <laughs> gave his word by signing the agreement that whomever is chosen to represent the Republican Party as president, mm -hmm. he would no. endorse that person. He went to the uh, all, Republican Co National mm -hmm. Convention, I didn't impression give us all the impression that he's going to get up there and say, well, no, he said two weeks I endorse, endorsing. I was, I'm going to endorse Donald Trump, right? He, he, he goes never said up. He, was going to endorse. he signed the agreement saying that he would. Okay, so Ted for, Cruz so, did, right? Okay, so a couple of and things. And keep in mind that Ted Cruz is a Christian. 
He is a Christian. Yes, and I understand. And we expect Christians to keep to their word. Okay, we also expect... And so Ted Cruz went up there, giving the impression that he is going to endorse Donald Trump. He got there. He told the people, oh, you made your own mind up. Okay, so... Let your conscience be your guide. Okay, so there's, your a, guy. there's a bunch of... And he there. did not endorse Donald Trump. Right. So I now see him as a liar. Okay. Who yeah. cannot be trusted. Okay. Because if he wasn't going to do it, he could have said it at best. I know I signed the pledge, but... So do you guys think Jesse's telling the truth here right now? I do. But I'm not going to do he it. He did say that. Because I don't way. like what he said about my wife. If somebody came to you, Jesse, and, and you signed a pledge, I'm going to support whoever's on the stage, and then two months later they said, your wife's ugly and your dad killed JFK, <laughs> you might have some second thoughts. I mean, that's, that's not unfair. No, and I then, wasn't. No. And then, and then. Let me tell you why I wouldn't. I wouldn't do what he did. I agree, said, by the way. I, <laughs> I love Trump for saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone to the convention. Yeah. I wouldn't have gone to the convention. Right. I agree with you. And if someone talk about my wife, who cares? People talk about I mean, people all the time. I mean, it, honestly, you know, if, say, if, if people, I'm running in a primary look, against somebody and he has about, 11 million social media followers and calls my wife ugly and suggests that my father murdered JFK, I'd be pissed. Would you? Yeah. The pledge itself is stupid. I said this at the time. I, when Trump was the only person who didn't raise his hand for the pledge, remember this? During the debates, they said, who pledges right. to support the nominee? And that's why I and respect him. One of the reasons I respect him. I agreed with him, him on that. He said up front, no, I'm not supporting him. By the way, I agreed with him on that. I wrote a full piece about why right. Trump was right and everybody else was wrong on that because yeah. you don't endorse candidates before you know who the candidate's going to yeah, be. Yeah, right, but still. That, I, I agree on that. You, you do not endorse somebody without uh, blindly like that. You don't do that, dude. What? I thought that Ted Cruz showed a weakness by getting upset and carrying on like that. Let me ask, what do you think, oh, I want to ask you this. Are you in support of putting a wall, a big, beautiful wall yes. around the borders? I, as I've said before, I'm in fa I, I was in favor of a wall before Trump, and I will be mm -hmm. in favor of a wall after Trump no longer is. Do you believe Which will that, be in about five minutes, given his <laughs> positional changes. Do you believe that there are any other politicians of those that was running for president would have put a wall around the border other than Trump. Absolutely. It was part of Cruz's platform. You really believe It was part Cruz of Cruz's was, platform. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, and so you believe that he... I could kind of see that with Ted Cruz a little bit, though, honestly. That's one thing I could see with Ted Cruz. I could see him wanting to put the border up. He lives in Texas. He's, a, he's, a, he's at least a, re a Christian Republican, you know? I could see him wanting to border wall. Up. What? Had he... Be Dude, Democrats used to want a border wall. Remember when Trump called Ted Cruz lying dead? Yeah, and she said it was good TV. I told my dad two thousand. Yo, he was. It was so funny. It was so funny, bro. Do you remember what he said to Jeb Bush? Jeb Bush has low energy. Become president. He would put a wall around the border? He, well, he would put a fence, yeah. I mean, that's what Trump is talking about, too, is a fence. No, it's not big, beautiful wall. A big, beautiful, the big, beautiful door with a big Trump T in it. He's yeah. going to put a touch fence, right? I mean, it's, it'll be like Israel's fence. That's the idea. Are you in support of, of stopping Muslims from coming in until he can figure out what's going on in order to keep America safe first. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm in favor of what he called extreme vetting. Right. That I agree well, with. Like yeah. a blanket ban on all Muslims, I think, is silly because people can just lie about whether they're a Muslim or not. So, Do you believe that he would bring jobs back? No. You don't believe No, that. I think he'll destroy the economy. <laughs> but you guys hear what he's getting ready to say, right? Destroy the economy. <laughs> really? His free trade policies are disastrous. I, I'm, I'm in favor of what he called extreme vetting. Right. That I agree with. Like right. a blanket ban on all Muslims, I think, is silly because people can just lie about whether they're Listen to what this dude says. They're a Muslim or not. So. Do you believe that he would bring jobs back? No. You don't believe No, that? I think he'll destroy the economy. <laughs> really? His free trade policies are disastrous. Amazing. Um, what do you think of the, uh, the never Trump people? What do you think of them? There are people who say, I would never vote. Are you part of that group that said the never Trump group? I mean, I've tweeted it before, yeah. Really? Sure. So huh. are you a but never a, Trump person? So I'm a never Trump person in the sense that, as Trump currently is, I would never vote for him. If he changes, if he becomes another human, but like, then... That's the thing, bro. He has not changed. He's the same person he was. I don't understand. I would this vote dude, for him. Bro. You can only vote based on the evidence that's in front of you. I wrote a piece for National Review where I said, "Never say never, Trump." Basically, which is, you know, if Trump changes, then I'd be open to voting for him. What I don't changed. understand, we've gone through so much mm -hmm. in the last seven years, especially. Oh, yeah. Why are the people who are 
against Trump, voting for Trump, why are they so willing to just give up the country? Because that's what will happen if they don't get Trump in. Why are they so willing to just give up? What is it about? He really is because he's like half and half. So I bet I started watching Jesse. Um, I saw this after it came out. I started watching Jesse like huh, 20. Man, what? Like right before Biden. I started watching Jesse right before Biden. Trump that would cause them to turn them off in that way to that they would just give up the country. So as, as I say, I, it's a matter of risk calculation. Your calculation is that if Trump loses, the country is over. My calculation is that if Trump loses, Hillary will be the second worst president in American history for four years, and then we can run an actual conservative and take her out. That's my calculation. But that's what we said about Obama. When well, he's out of there, no, I, I never said that put, about Obama. I felt, if, if Obama in. I felt if Obama won the first time, he would win the second. So how about the eighth year? You know, he's been there eight years. Isn't it time to take him out and not put his sister in? Uh, of course it's horrifying. Listen, Because you know that Hillary Clinton is Barack Obama in a dress. Yeah, I mean, she's a less effective politician. She's more corrupt. In your book, Bullies, you say uh, to hit back twice as hard. Mm -hmm. You remember saying that, right? Trump does that. Do you admire that about Trump? Uh, it depends if he's hitting the right target. So when he hits the right target, yes. What I've said from the very beginning about Trump is he's a hammer in search of a nail. Sometimes he hits a nail. Sometimes he hits a puppy. Lately, he's been hitting lots of puppies. So there are lots of puppy brains all over the floor. Give me an example of the right target. Okay, so the right target, for example, there's, there's one point where, uh, where Jorge Ramos, one's analogies are so weird uh was was in one of his press conferences and jorge ramos started yelling at him like what like you like wouldn't that, like a regular analogy would be right you sometimes you're hitting the the nail sometimes you're hitting your thumb he's got a lot of broken thumbs or something like that this dude says a lot of puppy brains all over the and ground. he basically said jorge you need to get out <laughs> right okay, that's right. fine right i, I mean that. wrong target Journalist writes a bad piece about him. He goes up and makes fun of him for being disabled. Do you admire <laughs> Trump at all? No, I find him. I think he's a despicable man. But it's but really yes. I noticed Personally that. And, I've noticed that over the last. I've been paying attention to politics for about 28 years now, mm -hmm. and I've noticed that the Democrats, along with the liberal media, mm -hmm. they say what they want about the Republicans. They yep. call them racist. They say they hate women. They hate the gays. They hate your mama. I, I just every year, year in and year out, mm -hmm. and the Republican representatives have not stood up for themselves. They allowed mm -hmm. that to happen. So I'll take that correction. That's right. right. And that I do admire about Trump. Yeah. If, if Trump. If Trump is hit by the wrong person, he hits them back. Hold on, I get a phone call. Hello? I'm streaming. Yeah. Are you all right? All right. All right. I'll call you later. All right. Love you. Good night. Yeah. I guess my mom went home from work sick today. Back. Oh, that yeah. I admire about Trump. I just think he has no discipline. I wish he had some discipline. What I've noticed, though, because he's hidden back, and they say something about him, he's back. He's he's right. on them. He hit back. Um, so and the weird. Democrats are not accustomed to that. Right, that's true. Yeah, not that's at true. all. So they're having like a hissy fit about it. Right. The problem As though is, they have no idea what's going on when I they've agree. been doing it so long. But what I don't understand, why are the Republicans going along, you know, the voters mm -hmm. going along with the Democrats on hitting Trump back when well, they know we'll what we've gone through as Republicans? Well, I mean, they're only screaming because they're not accustomed to being. No, I mean, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased when Trump hits the right targets. Again, I think that he just chases squirrels all over the place. Right. And the Gold Star family is a perfect example, right? So you got this Gold Star family, and they go up and they say something that is very, very political, right? They make I'm a political statement about Trump political that they don't have to make right at the DNC. And instead of just letting it go, or instead of doing the George W. Bush thing where he says they're a Gold Star um, family, they have yeah. right to their opinion, Maybe I disagree. <laughs> he feels the need to, to start going after the, the wife, right? Who's just standing there. She's literally yeah, just standing there. And he's like, well, she, she's the one, right? I mean, what, does she have anything <laughs> to say? He's like, well, wait, wait a second, Donald. Like, just calm down. Right, like, take five later. seconds, recalibrate. When that guy spoke at the Democrat in that con yeah, convention. Yeah, Mr. Khan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He has the right name, by the way, Khan. 
And when he spoke about Donald Trump at the convention and Donald stood up for himself, I'm like, yes, finally, I'm happy to see this happening because that guy was used by the Democrats to attack Trump. I agree. They put his little wife there. They put him there. They wanted this false sympathy for these I mean, people. You, you know I'm so not they used, that. So they used this man to attack Trump. And it was good that Trump attacked him back and Trump did not attack his son. He attacked the man who attacked him, right. and he simply well, asked, to be fair, well, why is it that his too. wife is just standing there? And, and the point to that, I believe, is that Muslims, the, the so-called religion itself, doesn't allow women to speak up. I think that's what he's trying to say, it, but again... But that's what Donald that's, said. I, I, right, and I think that's stupid. Why is that stupid? I think that's stupid because he has no evidence that that's why she wasn't speaking. So instead, he puts himself out on a limb. That's why he said, why is she standing there and not I, speaking? I, I, he okay. asked the yes, question. He always does that kind of stuff. He always says things like, lots of people say that JFK <laughs> was shot by, by Rafael Cruz. Right? Lots of people say this. Lots of people say that. Well, lots of people say you're a moron, dude. I mean, like, <laughs> lots I'm of people. Now look at Ben's stance. I, I like it. At least he turned a corner a little bit. He's still. I'll say lots of he still had never. He still. Uh, I don't know how to that you it. are not enjoying this because of the way Republicans, especially <laughs> outspoken Republicans, yeah. have been treated. I would think this would be refreshing. And I spent my entire career fighting for a conservative movement that is not racist, right? Fighting for a conservative movement that. It's not a real thing, and we leave that racism shit on the liberal side. Cannot be boxed into the corner by, a la by the left. Today, Hillary Clinton made a speech in which she connected Donald Trump to the alt-right, and it was not completely unjustified. What the Democrats have been trying to portray us as for my entire lifetime right, is a bunch of racist, sexist, bigot, right. homophobes who hate the poor and all this stuff. And Trump, because he has no discipline and no capacity to rein himself in, and because he really is not a conservative at heart, I mean, I know people who know him well. He's a Democrat. Because of, because of this, you know, he is... He, he gives conservatism a bad name, and he's going to lose by 10. So we don't even get the pleasure of defeating Hillary Clinton in the process. Just pause it there for a second. Let's think about that. Let's back it up. Let's see what he just said again. Listen to this. ...capacity to rein himself in, and because he really is not a conservative at heart, I mean, I know people who know him well. He's a Democrat. Because of, because of this, you know, he is... He, he gives conservatism a bad name and he's going to lose by 10. So we don't even get the pleasure of defeating Hillary Clinton in the process. But I think uh, Hillary need to be dealt with for saying that about Donald Trump. Because when Hillary doesn't denounce Black Lives Matter, the most radical, oh, I agree with worst you. in the KKK, what do you want dead cops? When do we want them now? For Hillary to get up and say that about Donald Trump, no one else but Donald Trump is going to deal with her. Well, I think that that's good she said it. Okay. So now he can fire back, whereas wish, Cruz or the other people would not have Okay, so, I, that. so that was one of the aspects of Trump during the primaries that I at least appreciated, was the idea that he'll fire back. Right. And that's, that's fine. Because I mean, Hillary Clinton has right. not denounced Black Lives Matter. As a matter right, of fact, she's still campaigning with Al Sharpton. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, for sure. And, and, and so I, why do you have a problem with that? Then? I don't have a problem with him fighting back. I have a problem with the fact that what she says about him is at least partially true. It'd be nice if he could say everything she's saying is a lie, and also you hang out with Al Sharpton, as opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to, on tape, me not denouncing the KKK. I mean, what's he supposed to do about that now? Well, Donald it's weak tea. You don't have to denounce him if you don't want to. Who gives a shit? Let me. Uh, Donald is. People are just so worried about the weirdest things. It's interesting in that he's a man, and we haven't seen a real man. In a big way, in a long time, you I don't would. Think that's true. I don't you think that's would. True. At I think Romney was a man. I think he was an honorable Romney. man. Romney. Did he just say Romney? What? He was an honorable man. Donald Trump is a sleaze. You think Mitt Romney is an honorable man? The way he came after Trump, he re Mitt Romney refused to deal with Barack Obama. He was a coward okay. because he could have won. I agree Bar with you on campaigning, but I don't define so man. So would a real man have cowered down to a little girly man like Obama? Okay, Romney a should answer not. Answer that first. Okay, Romney is, a, Ro who he is as a man and yeah, who is a politician. So. I'm not going to. So I know him and Jesse make a bet and people always call and ask him if Ben ever paid up. Argue with you that he needs more courage as a politician. But don't we but need you him said, to be but, a man? Uh, but I, I differentiate courage as a politician. 
politician, and, and ability as a politician from who you are as a man. I mean, I, I have a lot more respect for, for Mitt Romney, who stayed married to the same woman his entire life and leads a model family, than Donald well, Trump, who has three separate families, is a serial cheater and brags about having sex with other men's wives in his memoirs. Let me go back to the question. So you're saying that Mitt Romney is a man until he is dealing with politics? I'm saying that Mitt Romney is a man who cowered in that situation, whereas Donald Trump is a sleaze would a sometimes real a man, man. Would a real man have cowered in that situation? I think that that was not a manly thing to do. For Mitt Romney? Yes. So would a real but man cower in a situation like I think, that? I think there are, there are situations where real men make mistakes. So would a real man cower, especially with the voters saying, come on, do it. Are you saying that any, got I, to, I, Jesse, you're really making the argument that any real man has never had a situation where he's back down ever. But you're not answering that question. No, but, that's, but, but your, your definition is wrong. But how I mean, do you're you saying that a real man is never in a situation where no, he not, makes a mistake and cowers. I'm not I'm saying, saying never. That, I'm not. Well, he doesn't cower. He might not deal with the situation properly. Right. Time, I, I think that's what. But Mitt, Rom Mitt Romney Rom cowered. Oh, without a doubt, Mitt Romney is a coward. Without a doubt, everybody knows it. I mean, he he didn't like Selfish. to hide under the table. He's just he might bad as well. in the debate. He was, I was, he was really feel, bad in the debate. I was watching it too. I was as disappointed <laughs> as you were, man. But it's, but it's, but again, the, how I define a good, how do, how I define a real man, is extended to more than just yelling at people, which is what Trump does. I don't think it takes a real man to yell at someone. I think I, honestly, I think Trump is a coward. Did your and father he, ever yell at you growing up? Rarely. But he did. He never had to really. But he did. Uh, I'm trying to think of a situation which maybe once. I'm sure you did at least maybe once. once. Maybe once. And did that? When I was 11, I think. Did that take away from him being a real man? No, but if he had done it every single day and hit me with a belt, it would have. Um, are you one other thing? Are you saying that Mitt Romney uh, is a real man? Yes. But he left it at home, the man part at home <laughs> when he debated Obama. Yes. He. <laughs> I'm so glad I took my headset with me. What? <laughs> that doesn't even. Oh my Left God! The man part at I'm home. saying he made a mistake. Like he took it off. How do you take off your madness? It's not uh, because <laughs> I think that because I think that there are situations. I think there's a, there's a situation in every man's life where he wishes he could have it back. So do you see Donald Trump as a real man? No. Do you know? I think any, real men take care of their kids and don't divorce their wives. Do you know any? Well, how about his family? At least repeatedly. Do you? Uh, how and, about, and at least not while cheating with other women. I shouldn't say everybody. There are lots of good men who get divorced, but if you cheat with, if you cheat two times, progressively marrying younger women, and brag in your memoirs about having sex with other men's wives, <laughs> and then say I never <laughs> repent before God, no, I don't think you're a real man. I think that you're a, a giant pansy. No, what he said was, if I do something wrong, make a mistake, I do it better next time, okay. and that's what repentance is all about—to do it better, to learn from okay. the mistake. I don't know a do single religious person, not one. I who said they don't from, repent bro. before God. There are zero religious people who say that. I repent before I God at least three I times daily. It's According, I, I, I mean, it's like the writings are on the wall. This dude's like a, I don't know. Is he a, uh, what do they call him? Neocons? I, I don't know, man. I don't. My Shimona right, 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 right. I do it at least three times daily. Actually, four, because there's an actual <laughs> repentance section in the morning. Well, five. There's a repentance section in the morning service, yeah. in the afternoon service, and then three times a day, we say the, the standing Amida, where there's a paragraph of repentance. So at least five times daily, I repent. Okay, so Donald Trump, he could do it once. I mean, I'm not shut up in other men's wives. But that's not what he's doing either. Do you read? Uh, uh, that's how it's about By the way, saying. those Christians who are saying that they're repenting every day, mm -hmm. if you notice, they're not changing. They're Have you seen him changing? No, yes. They, they repent, I'll tell you, they, they repent, but they go out and do the same thing over again. In that aspect, I've, I've noticed Trump changed. All, all through uh, civilized West, all fakeism, motherfucker. He's so goofy, bro. Like, I, I, I don't know. I've noticed Trump changing for the better as a person, but I still see him being like, having the same, like, you know, wittiness, the same way he is with the media and everything. Tell me how Donald Trump has changed. In that he, in the older days, I saw a video of Donald when he was really young doing yeah. an interview. He's much like he is today as far as hard work, yes. uh, speaking up, uh, being an individual. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. He doesn't, that's why he's popular. He doesn't yes. fit into a, a, a mode. Oh, sure. And that's what we need, a man or woman that doesn't just fit into this mode and pretend that they're somewhere that they're not just to get voted in. Well, I mean, 
He yes. does, because he switches positions every few days. He's just really bad at it. Well, sure. He came well, out yesterday on Sean Hannity's show, and he said, we're going to keep all the illegals in the country, essentially. No, he said he's going to look. As a matter of fact, he did something I thought was really nice that I've never seen a candidate do before. In this town hall meeting, everybody and their mama were there. Mm -hmm. When Sean asked him about that, he turned around and asked the audience, well, well what do you think right, I because, should because he what do? You know think what do you think I should do? That's, that's nice of you to think that, but I think that, that it's more likely that he doesn't know what he's talking about, and he's looking for cues from the audience because he loves applause. Or he respect the people and he want to hear from the voters, the people who are voting him in, what do you want me to do? Is it possible that that could, what he was doing? No. Asking their opinion because no. he's concerned about the voters? <laughs> Why not? Ben is so naive that he just ultimately says no without like saying, it's possible. No, because it, because I think that Donald Trump it had a, he started making his pivot. Could you be uh, wrong about that though? No, I'm not wrong you about that. You cannot this. be wrong. On this, I am not wrong. When you say that Trump should not, I mean, uh, Trump will not keep his promises mm -hmm. to conservatives. Yes. Can you explain that a little bit for me? What is it that he will not keep you? All believe? of them. I mean, <laughs> I, I'd have, I'm hard pressed you, to think you about You believe promise. that he will close the borders? Uh, I believe that he'll build a wall. I don't believe he'll close the borders. You don't, do you, you, you believe that he will put a wall around the borders? Uh, I think that he will form some sort of fence, yes. So he will keep his word at that? Um, yeah. Do you believe that he will do the best he can do to bring back jobs, to lower taxes, to get rid of some of those regulations that are preventing small businesses from opening and those uh, uh, and function? No on taxes, yes on regulations, mm -hmm. no on trade. You so don't be is, like so, that at you know, all. His, uh, you Not one bit. Listen, bro, I don't care. When you can be as outspoken as you were about Candace Owens, who worked for you, and you are not willing to debate Nick Fuentes, nah, bro, I'm sorry. Best in intention. In in you lost me. Intent question, right. which is, you think he'll do his best. I think in his own mind, he'll always do his best. The question is, what is, I think Obama in his own mind was doing his best. His policies were just no, awful. No. Obama was evil. No, he was, he was doing his best to destroy us. I mean, I agree, but that was his best, right? I mean, so that's <laughs> do you love Donald Trump? Do I love Donald Trump? Uh -huh. Uh, no. <laughs> you don't love Trump? <laughs> Why would I love Trump? <laughs> because is it in the Jewish religion to love your enemies? In, in no, that's, no, that's yours. That's it, a, love, love thy neighbor as thyself is mine. Right, and the Christian's religion is to love your neighbor and also love your enemy as thyself. To hate no yeah, one. Yeah, is what it is in Hebrew. Yeah, to love so, your neighbor as yourself, yeah. So then are you obligated to love Trump? I mean, I can love him as a human, I, I can love him just as another human being and think that he does a lot of terrible things and hope that he does better. And do you love him? I mean, I love him the same way that I love a person I've never met. Do you love Donald Trump? I mean, that, that's, that seems like a stacked question. You seem to be asking it two separate ways, Jesse. <laughs> You're Do laughing you? in the background. That is so hilarious. I don't want to date him, if that's the question. Uh, there's love him on a spiritual level, a spiritual level, like he's a human being and I want to see him do better. And then there's love him on a political and personal level. And no, I don't love him on a political and personal level. I don't think he's a good person. You now look at this. Fast forward seven years later, greatest president we've had in my lifetime. Separate the love. No debate if they're not doing it the way you want them to? I think that you can love a human being for being a human being without loving the person they are. Do you think that God love you when you're doing wrong or does he stop loving that wrong part of you and just love the right part? I think that God loves me when I'm doing wrong, but he's disappointed in me. Right, but he still love you. He's not cutting off part of the love, right? Yeah, but I'm not as good at this as God is. Oh, you're not? Why not? Because he's God and I'm not. Because you're a married family man now, you're going to have to be loving all the time. I am to and my wife and children, be, but, but I didn't gonna adopt But there's going to be time her. when the kids are going <laughs> to drive that away or try to drive that away from you. Oh, right. But, but yeah, I'm related to them. So just yeah, for the record, really you does. do love Donald Trump. As, as just as I would love any other human being, I love Donald Trump. Are you angry at him? Yes, because he disappoints me. And why be angry at that, though? Because, Maybe, he, because he disappoints me. Is it possible that in your anger, you're not seeing things clear? Uh, it's possible, sure. Well, why take the risk to be angry and run that risk of not seeing things clearly? Because it also says in Psalms the, that you're supposed to hate evil. And making the wrong decision. It also says in Psalms you're supposed to hate evil. And, uh, and, when he does, and when he does bad things, I hate it. What's important to you at this time for America? What do you want to see? What changes do you want to see in the country? Oh, I mean, the, the, the first and foremost thing that would have to happen uh, is a moral revival. 
<laughs> nah, bro. He didn't have no moral revival. You still you're voting for him now, though. In the country, which is why I'm grateful for the, the kind of work you do. I mean, the, the, you, you talk about men being men. I think we, we need to have men who who are men. And what I mean by that is men who who get married, take care of their families, yeah. uh, don't abandon their kids. I think you start with that, and everything else is going to flow from there. Actually, I think yeah. that's that's the number one problem that I see is the societal breakdown in terms of family. Yeah. Uh, and exactly. uh, and the lack of the lack of belief in personal responsibility. You fix that, you fix pretty much everything in one shot. But of course, that's the hardest thing to fix. Do you believe that racism exists, that there's such a thing as racism? Sure. I love this. And do you have proof sure of racism? Does. Yeah, I mean, oh. historically, sure. I mean, Jim Crow is racist. I mean, there's, there's, plenty of, there's, there's plenty of... Is it based on color? Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be based on ethnicity, theoretically, a place of origin. It's the idea that, it's the idea it that, that taking culture out of the equation, just the circumstances of your birth, no, it's a liberal ideology. That's what it is. Birth should determine how you're treated. So that to is. me is, is, well, it's bigotry. You know, right. racism because of the word itself. I mean, it Indeed, you go into racism, then it goes into bigotry, then it's going to end up going into sexism, and it's just like, no, dude. See, includes it's race in the word, so you have to assume racism has to do with race. This word racism is a new word. It's been around for the last 50 years or so. Because when I was growing up, I never heard the word mm -hmm. racism. It did not exist. And I grew up on a okay. plantation under the Jim Crow laws. Mm -hmm. And there were blacks and whites who got along. They lived around each other. We didn't live with white people, but there were white people who got along with black people. And there were those who didn't. And there were blacks who did not get along with white people, but it was never based on skin color. It's the same thing that would happen in your family. If your wife get mad at you, all of a sudden, you're not the good guy anymore. In reality, you are, but the anger causes her to see you in a different manner. And so this, new, this word is a new word. The godless people have used that against white folks. They have used that to keep black people angry and white people intimidated in order- you see, That's what it is. It's a, it's a word that's meant for division, that's all to gain power well, well i mean I, I certainly so I, I disagree with you that racism doesn't exist but this is a term i think i agree with you on the on the fundamental assumption which is that anger against groups is not in america today is not keeping people down last word i believe trump is going to win okay we're going to put some money on it i would have i would have met him a, a million did you guys see the um Stuff with P. Diddy. His house got raided. Uh, Diddy's home. This was 15 minutes ago. The, uh, just these uh, the guys on the ground down there, the, the heavily armed uh, officers that made their way inside. Oh, the they ago. actually are kind of just milling about or holding the perimeter as it would be. This the non-essential, you can see them making their home. way back over to these armored vehicles, probably doing a little debrief about what they saw. In, in any type of these situations, it really is, you know, you've got these armored officers that go in first, but I would venture to say the investigators or the people that are know what they're looking for or probably still out there on the streets and they're waiting for that all clear to make sure that there is absolutely nobody on this property and again this is just a, a precaution they don't want to have any kind of issues maybe somebody's hiding still maybe just scared and it, you know doesn't have to be nefarious uh, and just because they don't know what's going on and they just don't want to have somebody pop out of a, a closet or a bathroom or any, any one of these rooms while they're doing that investigation and then other problems can ensue so that that's basically why we're seeing that large presence. They keep walking through there. And like you mentioned, this is an extremely large home and probably with many rooms and little secret areas. So they want to make sure that everything is cleared before they allow those investigators in to start doing that investigation, whatever it is that they're looking for. But you can see a number of those officers making their way back into that major. This is the big main house, as it would be, making their way back inside. And I would venture to say that they're going to just go through every one of those rooms and make sure that there is nobody in there. I don't think there are those, those guys that we're seeing, guys and gals that we're seeing in those heavily armored uh, gear and equipment, I don't think they're actually searching for any items that could connect uh, whatever the investigation is. 
I would venture to say that those are going to be the guys that you're seeing right there, and they're waiting for that all clear. And then this group that you see there, those are the ones that are actually going to go inside. They probably have, like you said, they probably have ideas where what they're looking for, where they might be. So, But right now, it is still a, wait, a waiting game to make sure that everybody is out of this building and that it is secure for the, uh, for the investigators to make their way in and actually start that search. And we should mention, thank you, Stu, that uh, if this is, in fact, involving a sex trafficking investigation, we do know that according to Diddy's attorneys and the rapper himself, he has denied any wrongdoing in any of all this. So uh, there are two sides, of course, to this as this all plays out. But it is interesting that these raids happening at the same time, according to TMZ, a raid of his Miami home is happening right now, as well as now we're looking at the live pictures of what's going on in Holmby Hills at this mansion right here, all connected to Sean Combs. So again, until we find out further word as to what exactly they're searching for and why, uh, we continue to look at the procedures taking place regarding this raid that's being conducted by Homeland Security. Hey. You have support from local law enforcement officials as well. Hold on. We saw from the ground. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. So you, I could put this wherever I want. I just I feel like it looks probably good right there. So uh, the whole deal is is fishy. A huge coordinating event and no. Agents waiting on the plane. Head. Yeah, I don't know, David. It's really weird. <laughs> I wonder what is what his agents mean though that it's a witch hunt, or his lawyers. See multiple agencies there, a part of all of this, and uh, they have a number. I didn't of know Diddy was a part of a witch hunt. A drone flying up top, as well as they had ladders taking uh, a closer look at certain p parts of the property. And so they are looking at every nook and cranny they need to in terms of why they're investigating uh, this home and property. So clearly Holy this is going to take a while. And as like Haley had mentioned, <laughs> with her shot down on the ground right there, more people are coming to your area, Haley. Hold on, I can't uh, have that play in. Yeah, I would say it's mostly media at this point. We were uh, the first ones here on scene. But, yeah, since there's probably a dozen different uh, media agencies. Damn. Yeah, it looks like his uh, his homes on both coasts are being raided. We still have not gotten word on exactly where P. Diddy is, if he is, in fact, for in sure. New York right for now sure, or in Los Angeles. And, uh, of course, yeah, we, we haven't seen him here in Holmby Hills. This is right off of... <laughs> you ever see that episode of South Park where... Uh... All the dads are witches and smoking crack and drinking Jack Daniels for Halloween. And uh, there's like one of them becomes like a real witch and they like can't figure out what it is. Like they want to call it a witch hunt, but they like because they're witches, they like, you know, it's like a hunting after witches type of thing or something like that. Of Sunset and Beverly Glen. Oh God! And it Hold on. I'd say about I wish I could. Ago. I wish I could play it on here, but I'll get a, a copyright strike. Uh, they're at his home here. They're also at his home in Miami. Of course, uh, it's a it's a little bit calmer, I would say, than it was about 20 minutes ago when it all happened. Uh, the the guns that were it's drawn so earlier funny, put away. They, it looks like they just put away their drone, but of course, doing a thorough job of checking the home for any kind of details that they can come up with related to this uh, these allegations against sex trafficking as you said Sandra there's several lawsuits against him for so that's just weird like what do they mean because like they're trying to say like Vince McMahon's thing is like considered sex trafficking but it seems like he was I don't I don't know it's just all or, weird to me. Uh, these allegations all of which he has denied uh, so we will have to wait and see of course uh, and everybody's interested in the details of of what um, how he's connected um, to to these latest allegations and from your so vantage we will bring point the very latest as soon as, I'm sorry yeah he did he was like take that take that take that yeah, from your vantage point Haley does it look like some authorities are leaving this the scene right now they're they're done or not is that not the case no, it looks like more are coming. Um, I think what you're seeing is just the vehicles moving to a different location. We're kind of 
at the bottom of the hill. But if you go up a little bit farther, some of the vehicles that you saw down here earlier have since uh, kind of Everybody, gone to the other yeah, side yeah, of the hill. Sure this is obviously like a very prestigious neighborhood. Uh, I said earlier, Humphrey Bogart's former house, I think, is next door to P. Diddy's uh, in the 200 block here of Mapleton and Holmby Hills off of Sunset near uh, Beverly Glen. Um, so the vehicles have basically just moved forward. You're seeing a lot more of those uh, law enforcement officers from the Department of Homeland Security, though, back here on the street in Mapleton since uh, they've come out of the home after they've done their thorough investigating inside um, that beautiful home belonging to P. Diddy, to Sean Combs. So I don't think they have any intention, Sandra, on going anywhere anytime soon. And overhead, you can see uh, law enforcement helicopters and, of course, Stu up there in Sky Fox. Thank you so much, Haley, for that perspective on the ground right there in front of that Holmby Hills mansion. Stu, up in Sky Fox, it looks like, yes, there are some more law enforcement, but in different attire. I shall, should I say suits in, instead of body armor? What? Definitely, and, and, the, and you know, and we all know how that works. The suits are going to be the investigators and probably the uh, the, the ones that are running the show. Yeah, sure. And again, I still think that they are just waiting for that uh, green light for them to be allowed to make their way inside the property and to make their way to the areas that I would venture to say that they probably are pretty specific. I don't think they're just going in randomly. And again, this is just a, a guess. They, you know, I don't think they're going in randomly, just going through you know everybody's stuff inside there. They probably have an area that they know or an office that they're going to be looking into or some computers that that's crazy bro hold on i want to see if uh 50 cent <laughs> like his first thing is 50 cent diddy Let me see. I want to find a short one. 50 Cent took to Instagram to mock Diddy after federal agents raided the hip-hop mogul's homes. Leading Hollywood's reaction, 50 shared an article and Fox coverage detailing the Homeland Security investigation and captioned, Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. 50 Cent took to Instagram to- 50 is such a savage. Um, was he on Fox News? Bet you it's a go. 57 comes at you fast, man. Uh, like I said, yeah, his kids got uh, when premium and great, his kids got taken to jail or got detained or something. I see this that, that stuff with the bridge is crazy too. <sighs> Diddy flees America. Here's a picture of that bridge. Following breaking news out of Baltimore, officials now say rescue workers are still searching for multiple people who are unaccounted for after a bridge collapse. A container ship struck a support column of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. A Look at this, right? Look at, watch, this thing loses power. Major thoroughfare around Baltimore at around 1.30 a.m. Eastern. 
large portion. Oh of the no, they didn't show it. Big. So beforehand, let me see if they show it at all. So like it was lose. I seen a video where it was losing power. Then the power came back on, and then it was losing power. After again. a bridge collapse, a container ship struck a support column of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, a major thoroughfare around Baltimore, at around 1:30 a.m. Eastern. A large portion of the span then fell down, sending vehicles and people into the water. And this is still very much an active search and rescue mission. And there is not a single resource that we will hold off on deploying. I have already authorized the deployment of everything yeah, from dude, that was air, crazy, land, and David. sea resources to make sure that this search and rescue operation is carried out to its fullest intent. Nicole Skanga has been following this story for us all day in Maryland. Nicole, great to have you with us. You have some new reporting about what happened on the ship in the minutes before the bridge was hit. What can you tell us? Yeah, I want to outline a few things, uh, Robert. Good to be That's with you. Crazy. First and foremost, I just heard from the Baltimore County Executive. He told me that roughly two minutes elapsed between when the pilot and crew first notified Maryland authorities that something was wrong with the cargo container ship Dolly and when that collision occurred at approximately 1.30 a.m. That is how quickly <clears throat> local law enforcement here had to jump in into action in order to close down traffic to and from the bridge. We're also learning uh, from local and federal law enforcement officials that the tugs on the dolly were loose prior uh, to the collision that occurred, uh, that it is standard operating procedure for the tugs to escort uh, these large container ships out of the port, out of their docking station, but that it is not required for an escort to be there uh, when, when going under the Francis Scott we'll Key Bridge. And so an important note there and also key for law enforcement uh, in the coming days and specifically the NTSB, really? which has okay. launched its independent investigation of this is getting Dude, this on board the ship. They were not able, NTSB, to get on the ship today to get those recorders to determine at what time did the power go off, at what time uh, did the ship's controls really get out of whack here. I was told by law enforcement, uh, by internal briefing papers, that uh, there were really? alarms okay. that rang out aboard the dolly. Is that a uh, that Netflix the movie or what is that on, had David? seconds to run a few system checks and that it was at that moment that the system checks failed that they reached out and notified Maryland authorities. Nicole, you are tracking the impact this has not only on the national level as, as it plays out in Congress perhaps in the next few weeks, but what it really means for people in the immediate aftermath. What are you learning? Yeah, and absolutely. I mean, I've heard community members call the bridge a symbol, a landmark, a hallmark of the city. We heard Secretary Buttigieg call it a cathedral of American no, 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 Listen to this, right? From the moment it leaves the fact. Oh, this dude is a clown, bro. That chick is a. I'm still surprised that some people were surprised when I pointed to the fact that uh, if a highway was built for the purpose of di dividing a white and a black neighborhood, or if an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or there would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by. Why is this dude in Congress? But that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. I mean, there's just no such thing as it, bro. It's like, it's just a, it's a fake construct that's meant to keep us divided. Because white people hear it and get fearful and black people hear it and get mad. And people, any other person, just like the word, word person of color, that doesn't make any sense. Like white's not a color or something. 
Um, I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality. And I think we have everything to gain by acknowledging it and then dealing with it, which is why the reconnecting communities, that billion dollars, is something we want to get to work right away, uh, uh, putting to work. But that's such a heavy lift. I mean, you have to reconstruct <clears throat> communities that this happened to. As you said, some of these beltways and, and interstates and roadways were built before the Civil Rights Act, before the Voting Rights Act, and were made meant to be racist. But how do you go about redefining and what does that mean? Uh, Replanning these roadways and communities that are already settled in. Yeah. Um, so uh, what's interesting is it's going to vary by community, and we have to listen to the community. Sometimes it really is the case that an overpass went in a certain way that is so harmful that it's got to come down or maybe be put underground. Why is he our transportation secretary? Why? I don't get it. Other times, maybe it's not that way. Maybe the really important thing is to connect across it, to add rather than subtract. And that's where we don't want to impose a one-size-fits-all answer uh, from here. But when we were out in Syracuse, for example, looking at I-81, we saw the local vision uh, for how they want to get past those divisions. It's so and crazy, those local Michael. ideas are going to be taken very seriously as we try to meet the spirit of this law. Oh, my head hurts. Infrastructure. It's also economically so significant. The second the future of your business on is the here. eastern seaboard Wix, in 2023, responsible for 52.3 million tons of foreign cargo worth $80 billion, so, 30,000 vehicles a day cross the bridge. I don't get That's it. a whopping 11.5 million. So here's a conspiracy theory. This is just a conspiracy theory. Just so you know, YouTube, it's just a con I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying it's 1,000%. It's not even conspiracy. It's just a thing. Would they have done this because they think it's a racist bridge? Million in the course of a year. But just talking to people here on the ground who have come down to take a look at the bridge, they can't believe... Uh, what they're seeing. We spoke with one individual who works at the port. His name's John Zafia. Take a listen. I was walking the dog last night around 1.30. I heard this loud boom. And they really didn't, you know, I thought maybe it was an accident, but mm. nothing to this <laughs> capacity. That's going to affect all of our work I don't down get there. It, David. You can't get any ships in or out. And that's investment on the community level and, of course, investment on the federal level, as we've heard today from officials, uh, all the way up to the president vowing that every penny that the city of Baltimore needs in its rebuilding will be given uh, to the city. And, and yeah, I asked I'm, Senator uh, Cardin earlier. I think I'm going to make that a thing, maybe like Tuesdays and Fridays or something for now until, until otherwise. I don't know. We'll see. Fridays for sure, though. I just, I wasn't doing nothing. I was kind of just trimming some of my gaming clips and everything, so... I was like, you know what, I'll stream for a little bit on my political channel since I didn't get on my gaming channel today. Here today, uh, what the financial impact will be, he said, we're not even there yet. I can't even give you uh, a, a dollar or a price or yet, even a ballpark, uh, a, a ballpark figure. Right? I don't know. I didn't watch it, but I'm probably Nicole, you've been doing terrific work. I know you were up early in Maryland on CBS Morning, so working all day. We'll let you get back to your reporting, but thank you for joining us. At the same time, our White House correspondent, Ed O'Keefe, senior political correspondent, joins us now from the White House. Ed, tell us more about how President Biden is handling this. Bob, he was informed earlier this morning and this has spent a, most of the morning with top aides who uh, deal with these kinds of local and state issues across the country to get a handle on it. Spoke with the governor, the mayor, and other officials. And before leaving for a series of events in North Carolina this afternoon, made clear that it's his intention to see the federal government pay for the reconstruction and the cleanup from the collapse of this bridge. Uh, that will leave a lot of questions as to how exactly he can say that that should happen and how exactly it would be paid for. And then the same expression of sentiment so sad, about who would bro. pay for this, he said, I hope Congress will work with me on it. So in essence, he's signaling it's going to require some kind of legislation or at least authorization from Congress working with him to make this happen. Appreciate that for the second time now in two weeks, a bridge feeding the Interstate 95 corridor along the East Coast has either dropped into the water 
or been condemned and is no longer usable. And this is a president, the other one being uh, right there in Providence, Rhode Island, where they've discovered that an ongoing reconstruction project has to be scrapped entirely and restarted. And it's the third incident now along the I-95 corridor in the last year. It's the crazy, other one being wow. uh, the partial bridge collapse in Philadelphia due to a tanker fire last year. This is a president who, of course, has put so much of his legacy on the line in terms of infrastructure and rebuilding the country and creating jobs and demonstrating that government can do big things and use its spending power to make it happen. So here at the White House, at least, this is now seen as a great opportunity or challenge that has to be met Crazy. to prove yet again to an increasingly skeptical public that the government can step up and solve a problem that's been created by an unforeseen disaster, as we've seen there in Baltimore. And so you can expect that here at the White House in the coming weeks and months, if not years, the president's going to be keenly concerned about the reconstruction of this bridge in a city he knows well because he's gone to and from it and through it throughout his career uh, as, as, a, as a senator from uh, neighboring Delaware and then as vice president and president. We were with him last year. 2022 when he visited the That's port of Baltimore crazy. to make infrastructure announcements he's keenly aware and RIP racist bridge Yo check this shit out so yesterday first Montana had an install up in the Bronx 10 people showed up. He said, fuck this, let me have a drink. Puffy trying to make me go against 50, he set me up. Me and my man's here, he came by. Shout out to Ethel Vodka. That shit kind of watered down, but I love it. Yo, check this. Oh, I thought he was going to say something about Diddy. Let's see this. Damn it, son of a bitch. Raid at music mogul Sean Diddy Combs properties, including an estate right here in LA. The searches appear to be part of an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Oh. Eyewitness news reporter Sophie Flay is live in this exclusive Homeby Hills neighborhood where agents executed a search warrant. Sophie. Colleen, we are standing outside of Diddy's home, and yesterday it was filled with Homeland Security agents and law enforcement. Today, it's just media, but as to where he was during those raids is still unclear. A raid carried out by dozens of Homeland Security agents at Sean Diddy Combs' home in Homeby Hills Monday, raising questions. It's safe to say not a lot of people know what's going on, and I'll bet he doesn't really know what's going on either. His mansion at the center of a federal sex trafficking investigation led out by the HSI Southern District of New York, according to law enforcement. A similar scene at his home in Florida. HSI agents in Miami and Los Angeles seen assisting the search, seizing a number of electronics, according to law enforcement. Agents seen bringing boxes out of his L.A. home, even looking through cushions in the outdoor pool furniture. And it was there where his two sons were detained for a period of time, but not arrested. Photos obtained by ABC News. Okay, so they only got, okay, okay. Jet. So, okay, so they only got detained. They weren't arrested. Antigua, no information about who. They were probably just detained just to make sure that they didn't do anything. Who, if anyone, was on the plane. I would say, like, to be careful with <laughs> what we're hearing, because obviously people are just, like, piling on to this. They see opportunities for attention. They see opportunities for money. This comes as Diddy faces legal trouble. Several women have filed civil lawsuits against Combs. A producer also filing a federal lawsuit against him last month. In response, Diddy says he did not do the awful things being alleged. And Colleen, in a statement just released from Combs' attorney, says there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. Dude, the statement goes crazy. on to say this is nothing more than a witch hunt and that Mr. Combs... That's crazy. That is crazy. What time is it? 7.20? Yeah, we'll stay out for like another 20 minutes. Let's see. That was a good one with him and Destiny. <clears throat> How do 
do I do it all? Fox 11 was the first to report about a raid at the home of Sean Diddy Combs. Tonight, we're digging a little deeper into the legal issues already facing the music mogul. They include multiple lawsuits so involving allegations of sex workers, hidden cameras, and compromising recordings of celebrities and politicians. Now, all this was prior to today's federal raid. Fox 11's Gina Silva. This, this dude sounds like Jeffrey Epstein with what? into that tonight. She's got the latest on those lawsuits. Gina. Alex, Christine, this right here, it is, is the lawsuit. It is 75 pages of just shocking allegations. Many legal experts say the accusations are very similar to those of Jeffrey Epstein's case. Called it. If you have read this complaint and I called it and seeing the nature of these allegations uh, the raids aren't that surprising it's a 75 page complaint with explosive allegations of sexual assault sex trafficking and drugging of underage girls the lawsuit was filed by music producer Rodney Little Rod Jones on February 26 it names Sean Combs aka Diddy his son Justin Dior and several others and it also includes photographs of bloody crime scenes. Se Hold on. I want to see something. I want to see if I could see anybody else. The lawsuit was filed. Chalice Recording Studios, Christina Corman, Motown Records. By music producer Rodney yeah. Little Rod Jones on February 26. It names Sean Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, his son Justin Dior, and several others. And it also includes photographs of bloody crime scenes, sex workers, and drugs allegedly administered at, quote, freak-off parties. It's clear that the allegations, uh, again, in this complaint, Many of them rise to the level of criminal conduct where you would expect to see some kind of criminal investigation taking place. Civil rights attorney Areva Martin is not connected to this case. She is serving as a legal analyst. If even a handful, not the entire complaint of allegations, but even if a handful of these allegations are true, they mean trouble for Sean Combs. Jones lived and traveled with Diddy for 13 months. The complaint states, Mr. Jones was sexually harassed and assaulted by Mr. Combs. It also states Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to solicit sex workers. The complaint goes on to claim Diddy has hidden cameras in every room of his homes and that there are recordings of celebrities, music label executives, politicians, Politicians and athletes in compromising positions. The number of celebrities who come up in this lawsuit, who according to this plaintiff, were involved in or have information about uh, some of this really uh, oh, salacious man. and allegedly criminal conduct on the part of Sean Combs. Yo, that's kind of crazy, bro. What? So is this like, is this like uh, them connecting the pieces now? The lawsuit. Because he's right there. That's P. Diddy and Jeffrey. Yep. Uh, refers to Diddy's chief of staff as Ghislaine Maxwell, who was found oh. guilty of recruiting underage girls for Jeffrey Epstein. I've seen these cases before with high-powered, uh, affluent uh, individuals. But again, at this point, these are allegations, and perhaps we will see this matter move this from kind of crazy. civil to criminal. Earlier this year, Diddy's former longtime romantic partner, Cassie Ventura, accused him of rape, sex trafficking, and physical abuse. After Diddy settled that case, other women filed similar lawsuits. Diddy posted his enough is enough statement on Instagram, where he strongly denied all the allegations against him. Uh, again, just really serious allegations that clearly rise to the level of, of criminal conduct, if true.
Now, there are many other serious allegations really, in the lawsuit. We also contacted Diddy's attorney, Sean Hawley, for comment. She did not get back to us. Alex Christine, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. What do you guys think? Do you guys think it's true? Oh, man, that's crazy. That is crazy. All right, guys. On that note, I'm going to end it. Really appreciate you guys all stopping by and hanging out with me. Uh, I'll be back probably Friday, maybe maybe earlier than that. I don't know. But we'll see you later. Have a good one. Peace. For sure, Michael. For sure, bro. I guess we'll find out. But all right, brother. I really appreciate you. Have a good one.